Renee here at Mayhem and the Chickens. So this morning we are in the hatch room and we have a lot of things going on. So I'm going to take you along and show you what I'm doing today. So you've seen the chicken shed out back. So this is not the chicken shed. This is where I incubate and hatch and the new chicks or ducklings or whatever it is that I'm hatching stay in here for anywhere from four to seven days just to make sure that they're okay that they've learned how to eat and drink and everything is okay and then they move out to the chick shed and the chick shed is where everybody can come and they can you know pick out whatever chicks they want but until they're ready to go out there and they're safe and healthy and everything is good they don't go out there so let's uh let me pause, move the camera for you, and let's move some new hatchlings over to the brooder. Be right back. All right, this is the hatch tray. So I have two different incubators, one that's over on this side that you can't see, and one that's here. These are the bigger ones. Um, I also have a few that I use for duck eggs. So these I only use for chicken eggs because I feel like the styrofoam just doesn't hold the humidity right. But anyway, so once they're ready to go on the hatch tray, they come over here and this is what I use. This has no egg turner in it. This is just for hatching. And that way I can stagger um, in both of these incubators over here all different dates and, you know, because you open up anyway a couple times the candle, so. I'm really not opening it up too much. All right, so let's see what has hatched in here. I'm not gonna open it up all the way because there are still, I believe, some in here that are pipping because I have different dates in here. So I'm not gonna open it up all the way, but I will take the chicks out and show you. So we have... tip is what one chick does they will all do so if you have if you're hatching chicks and you have a bunch that need to go to another brooder and then you have a bunch of hatchlings if you leave one of those chicks in that brooder if they're not too big of course if you leave one in that brooder it will teach all the other ones without you having to do anything how to eat and drink and It'll be a lot easier. So it looks like we also have a couple more barred rocks in there. This is a English lavender Orpington. And he's gonna he's pretty much dry, about 95%, and he'll he'll finish underneath that heat lamp under there. But I don't want them to be without food and water. Orpingtons. I don't know if you can really see him. When he dries a little bit more, I'm going to show you. They're really pretty chocolate color, and it's actually 
a cross between an English Lavender Orpington and a Buff Orpington. And nobody else is really dry enough to come out. But the humidity is a little bit high, so we're going to take some of these wet eggs out. And that will help to drop it. And I see we do have one. One is pending right now. And the date on that egg is the 31st. So. those guys out and we're going to go around I'm going to show you the brooder be right back so here is our brooder it's really hard to get a good angle with the tripod so I'll just pick it up and show you so here's the heating lamp it's it's a uh, I forgot the wattage on it I'll have to get the box but it's really strong and it's really hot so it only covers this part, when you start to move your hand over, you can actually feel the coolness. In this room, because of the incubators and the heat lamp and the vents are closed, it stays really warm. So they're away from the heat. They're all over here. But if they need to, they'll move over here. And in here, we keep Nutri-Drench. Um, let me show you that. So, this is Nutri-Drench. This is full of vitamins and supplements that, that new chicks need from being in the brooder, or the hatch tray, and you know, they might stay in there for a couple of days, so that really helps to get them hydrated. See, he's already, he just came out, and they're already learning how to eat and drink which is fabulous. And you can see how they're not huddled together, which means that they're perfectly comfortable with the temperature. And we already have Nutri-Drench in here. We leave the Nutri-Drench in here in the hatch room because most of the time this is where you'll need it most. Sometimes when the chicks move out there, if you have a lethargic chick or, you know, something's going on, you might want to give it to them as well, but usually we don't have any issues because we give it to them right off the bat. Now also, and I don't so much use it for baby chicks unless they're bantams, really tiny. So we have marbles. And sometimes we'll stick those marbles in the waterer so that they can't drown. Uh, we, I haven't had any issues. The most of the issues that I have with drowning is quail. So we definitely use them for that. All right, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And we'll spin around. I'll show you the incubators with the duck eggs since it's time to turn them anyway. Be right back. So these are the incubators that I use for my duck eggs. Someday I'll have something bigger and better, but for now, these work really well. They just don't hold the amount that I would like them to hold. So for duck eggs, I do it a little bit differently. Hold on, plug this stuff. So for duck eggs, I turn them twice a day, and in the morning I only turn, but in the evening I come in and turn them and candle them, and I also mist them. So. For all waterfowl, I do that for goose eggs. Sometimes it's uh, hand turning can be a pain, but 
it gets results, so I'm okay with it. So all of these I candled last night, and they are all um, developing, moving. These are all different dates. The most of these will begin to hatch on the 10th. That's the date they go on the hatching tray. This one is the 15th. And then the 22nd. And I say, you know, the hatching tray. I mean, they're really already on the hatching tray because they're going to hatch in here too. Uh, I don't know how that one but Okay. This one I'm not going to turn because it's a goose egg and I just put it in here last night. And you only, for the first 7 to 10 days, you're just going to let them sit in here. And, which is basically what I'm doing with this one, because they're not ready to be turned yet. So that's for the first 7 to 10 days, you just let them sit, don't turn them, don't miss them, don't do anything with them, just leave them there. And then after that period of time, you open it up, candle them all, see what has, what is developing and what's not. Of course you're going to take out what isn't developing, and then you'll turn them, and you'll miss them. Now you can let them cool. See, these are the 23rd. These are the 23rd, so I'm not going to turn these. Because they're not ready to be turned yet. So I'm just going to leave them there. Um, so, I open up in the evening, not twice a day. So the, the first thing in the morning when you come in and you do your turning, you do your turning and then you close it back up. Now, in the evening, I come in and I turn and then I let them cool for 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, and then we miss them with the water bottle and cover them back up. Now what that does, because they're waterfowl, it simulates the mother leaving the nest, going for a swim and come sit back on the nest and, and she's wet. So that, that simulates that. Not perfectly, but it works, and I have a pretty good hatch rate in these incubators. Um, these are the Magic Fly incubators. Let's see. Hold on just a second. They hold about 19 duck eggs. Now, I don't keep the turners in these because I turn them myself. Because if you keep the turners in there, they're only going to hold like nine duck eggs. And that's just not going to work. That's just not going to work. So these guys here, these are not ready to be turned. So they're all, yeah, none of these are ready to be turned yet. And I'm not going to open up this one because these are actually chicken eggs that I got from a friend and um, I really wanted them to go into the best incubator that I had because I want them to hatch. Um, so we have some vitamin E. Most of the time when I use vitamin E is if any of them have rye neck. We'll do the Nutri Drench, the vitamin E, keep them separate from anybody else and, and hopefully that will uh, help them through that process and get them better. But that is the hatch room, and that's what we do here. So if you have any questions, or if you have any ideas on how to do it better, please leave a comment and let me know. I'm always open to ideas, ways to do things better, or if I have any ideas to share with you, I'm more than happy to do so. All right. Later on, we will go out to the chick shed, and I will show you what's going on in there. But for now, have a great day. Thanks for joining us.